Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship in this season of Lent on this last Sunday in Lent. Welcome to all of you who are here. It's all so good to see you. It didn't snow today, so that's something to be grateful for right off. Thank you uh, to all of you who are watching on Facebook Live or listening on the radio. We're just so happy to have people worshiping with us however they are here. Thanks to everyone who makes worship possible, a whole um, bunch of people. Um, a few things that are going to change today. Um, first of all, this is the last day we're going to be using the communion pods here for communion, but we will have you come up the side aisles and kneel at the altar. If you are not comfortable coming up for communion, if you want an usher to bring you a communion pod, please let them know during that time. And then um, you'll deposit your pods when you are finished on your way back. But starting uh, Easter, uh, Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, we'll be doing communion um, the traditional way. There's also a bunch of people back there that we haven't seen live and in person for quite a while. Trinity Choir is here. Yay. <laughs> I just want to thank all of the choir members, um, especially Scott, um, for what they have done for this, um, this institution for the last two years. It's, we, have, we have such remarkable gifts here when it comes to music, and so to have them be able to pre-record and, and keep everybody safe has just been such a blessing, but it's a, an even greater blessing um, to have them here in person. Another thing that's uh, new or back uh, again is fellowship. Um, I was just downstairs and they were putting lemon bars on trays and I can smell the coffee even though, though I don't drink the coffee. So immediately after worship you could head downstairs for fellowship and thanks to the outreach team and thanks to all who have volunteered in these coming weeks and months to serve fellowship. If you still would like to serve fellowship please talk to Terry or one of the outreach team and they'd be happy to have you sign up. Um, today, immediately after worship, our fifth graders will be having their first communion class right here in the sanctuary. Um, so that will, be, I think we're going to wait till 1030. Hang on, let me double check. Yes, 1030. So you can go downstairs and get a treat and then come back upstairs for an even holier treat. Um, so fifth graders and your, uh, at least one parent up here. And then after that, you'll go down to the school and um, Mrs. Eichen will help you make your own communion cup. Then let's see what else. This afternoon, um, there's a concert. The Lauren um, Choir is going to be presenting a concert here for the Telelog. That will be at 2 o'clock. The public is welcome to come, and there's a free will offering. And then this Wednesday is our last Lenten supper. Um, again, the outreach team will be serving tacos at 615, and then we'll have our final Holden evening prayer service at 7. And then next week, we'll start... Um, Holy Week, our Holy Week services with Palm Sunday and Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and then our wonderful festival worship on Easter Sunday. I, um, I always hesitate to say what, where I will be on Thursday because I don't want to, um, to, to uh, emphasize it too much, but I will be in Minneapolis on Thursday, assuming it doesn't rain, with some guys with balls and bats. And... So let's just, um, you know, keep our, our, you know, our hopes up that this will be a better season than, well, it can hardly be a worse season than last year. So that's where I will be on Thursday. And I think, unless anybody else has any other announcements, let's all take a deep cleansing breath and breathe in the Spirit of God and breathe out all our cares and anxieties. God is with us. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come now and worship the Lord. Please are able for confession and forgiveness found on page 94 of your bulletin. 94 of your hymnal. And I have to get there. I'm sorry. One minute. 
I should have done this earlier. Where is setting three? There we go. Whew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn is number 324, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth.
Let us pray together the prayer found on page two of your bulletin. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah, beginning with, or chapter 43, beginning with verse 16. The prophet declares that long ago God performed mighty deeds and delivered Israel from the Egyptian bondage through the waters of the sea. Now God is about to do a new thing, bringing the exiles out of Babylon and through the wilderness 
in a new exodus. Here is the reading. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself so that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of Zion. We are like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of shouts of joy. And the Today's second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, starting with the fourth verse. Writing to Christians in Philippi, Paul admits that his heritage and reputation could give him more reason than most people to place confidence in his spiritual pedigree. But the overwhelming grace of God in Jesus calls Paul to a new set of values. Here's the reading. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ." and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward a goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel for the fifth Sunday in Lent comes from John chapter 12, starting with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Judas willfully misinterprets as waste Mary's extravagant act of anointing Jesus' feet with costly perfume. Jesus recognized that her lavish gift is both an expression of love and an anticipation of burial. Here's the gospel. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Issachariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept a common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let's have a word of prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we give thanks for your love for us and that we can gather as a family of faith and we can share with one another the hopefulness of the new thing that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, here we have a lot going on in John. We are, as we read this passage from John, we are like the little spider that sits up in the corner of the dining room and looking on and observing what is going on because there's a lot happening in this little bit of John. We have all the main characters of what's going to take place. It's, it's almost as if John kind of gathers things together and is getting ready to let them explode into Holy Week and the crucifixion and resurrection because we have all the, or most of the main characters. We have, it's at, at this dinner party, it's at Lazarus' house, and of course it says, whom Jesus raised from the dead, and at that point, the Pharisees and some of the other synagogue leaders had decided, well, if he's going to start raising people from the dead, we're going to have to find a way to get away from, get uh, Jesus out of the picture. And it's at that point that they start plotting to kill Jesus because they think, well, if he's you know, raising people from the dead, let's just get rid of him, not knowing that what may happen and the thing that's about to explode. Lazarus is there, and his sister Matt, Martha is cooking in the kitchen once again. If you remember that older story of Martha and Mary, and Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, and Martha is doing all the cooking for the dinner and complains to Jesus, and Jesus says, well, Martha, you worry about a lot of stuff, but Mary's chosen the good thing, in, in this story, Mary or Martha, she doesn't complain. She's doing, she's doing, caring for her guests as best she can. And we have Mary, who once again is at Jesus' feet. Only this time she opens up uh, perfume and nard, which is used to anoint dead people. And she's anointing Jesus' feet. And you can, you have a sense of the perfume just filling that room, don't you? Of what it may smell like. You, some of you may think of your favorite perfume. Some of you may think of like when you come home and you open the door and there's supper cooking and garlic and onions frying on the stove. And ah, oh, that's good. 
Or maybe it's spring that you smell, but you have that sense of that smell that's just filling the room. And, uh, and then you have Judas. You know, <clears throat> and there he is. He, uh, you know, complains. He looks at what Mary's done, and he thinks, boy, that's a lot of money. Ooh, we could have sold that for 300 denarii. We could have really made a haul and given, you know, perhaps like so many, you know, given some to the poor, but I could have had a good cut of that, he thinks to himself, it says, because he was a thief. And in some sense, he tries to monetize what's going on when he says, oh, we could have $300, uh, could have done a lot with that. I could have had that new boat or, you know, maybe a new uh, cabin on the lake or something like that. Uh, who knows what he was thinking, but he was, that's where he was at. That's where his heart was at. Mary anoints Jesus' feet. It's both an, a show of love for Jesus, but it's also a preparation for what's about to happen. It's like this whole dinner party is like uh, about to just kind of burst forth and something new is going to happen. In, in the history of the Old Testament, the, the one event that kind of overshadows everything uh, is the Israelites' exodus from Egypt. And I don't, you know, I think perhaps it gets a little more attention because there's a ritual that is um, that explains the whole thing. And the Jewish people have celebrated the Passover ever since that time, oh, about, what, three, 4,000 years ago. They celebrate the Passover every year. And remember that Exodus event. Isaiah comes much later and when we read this text in Isaiah, where the people of Israel are at, they're in Babylon. And they once more are slaves in Babylon. And Isaiah comes to them, much perhaps like Moses, and he says, God is going to deliver you and bring you out of this slavery, this bondage that is holding you, and it's going to bring you back to the promised land and give you a new thing. A new thing is going to happen for you because God cares for you and watches out for you. I love this song. If you, as you were um, chanting it, did you catch that? It, it, it's an, in a sense for us who live in Minnesota, this is our, we have a better sense of God's deliverance, or we should, we should. Because we are right now at the cusp of a new thing, right? You know it. Things are about to break forth. God is about to do a new thing. I know this, I know this. There's a couple other guys who know this in this congregation because the maple sap has started running. And it's starting to go up those maple trees and those buds are going like, mm, and they're about to go, boom. And spring is here. You probably think, oh, I've seen some robins. Well, good for you. I've seen maple sap. <laughs> and that is the true test. The snow that we got yesterday, I mean, you woke up and I know that some of you are like, you wake up and you see snow. Oh, I'm so tired of winter, right? Did you think that? You know, in my world, in my lexicon, just to let you know, because maybe, uh, you know, I've probably had too much maple syrup. But, um, but in my world, it's called the sugar snow. And that means the sap is really going to run. And, and it did. It's been running pretty good. And we can hardly keep up with it. And I think, boy, that's a great thing. Because we are moving on. We're moving out 
of the dead of winter. The people of Israel are, are being promised by Isaiah that they will move on from the dead of their winter, that they're going to move on into the new thing that God is doing. The psalm, as we read, the, that, that end of the psalm, they, they go out at that last line, that they start by, oh, carrying things are heavy, and then all of a sudden, there's a new thing, the harvest, and they're carrying their sheaves, and they're celebrating the new thing that God is doing in the promise of what's to come. And we in Minnesota, we get to experience that this spring, a new thing. We've, we've felt that we've experienced it before, right? But how many of you who are gardeners are thinking, well, this year I'm going to, and you can fill in the blank, because you're going to do new things. And we're going to celebrate. And we're going to, like the, uh, like the psalmist says, we carry our seed and then it'll soon be our sheave of harvest because God is doing a new thing for us. And in this gospel text, it's as if it's all kind of coming together, this dinner party, all the major characters are there, and who is the most important? It's Jesus. He's there. He, he knows that after this, Things are going to burst forth, and there will be a new thing. There will be death when things are planted in the winter of, uh, of death, but then there will be the resurrection and the hope and the promise of new things to come. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, be with us in this springtime. Help us to be excited for the new things that are taking place, to not languish in the old, to not look back necessarily on what had happened, but to move towards the forgiveness and the life that is to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We'll sing our next hymn, 335. <laughs>
stand as you are able as we confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on the inside front cover of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Do a new thing in the church, Lord. Free us from things that don't serve the gospel. Create leaders who bring people to you. Give us courage in the midst of change. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Regina. Bless our ELCA partner congregations all over Southeast Minnesota, South Sudan, and Tanzania, and Colombia. And bless this congregation and our ministries, and especially our, our outreach ministry and our worship ministry. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Do a new thing for creation, Lord. Reverse the trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Bless our farmers and all who depend on their labor. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our world, Lord. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations and especially in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, and Myanmar. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Do a new thing for those who suffer, Lord. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick. And especially today, we ask for your blessing for those in our community, our congregation, and our families who are suffering. For Jeff Gerard, Adele Twite, Grady Lundgren, Rosalie Statler, Dale Buxengard, Sandra Rower, Ron and Dawn Stone, Paul Morkin, Jerry Warden, Carmona Wiste, Lori Hagen Jensen, Judy Robley, Lucas A.J. Wiste, Mary Amundsen, and Finn Yiris, Ted Johnson, Rachel Krensky, Shirley Girard, Sandra Wenig, Mavis Johnsrud, Sawyer Oaks, and Jennifer Wedman, and for the family and friends of Ruth Sherry and Joe Deschler Sr., and for all those we name now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Do a new thing within us, Lord. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of all human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued, and deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. she was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me and again after supper Jesus took the cup and when he had again given thanks he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and all are welcome to come up. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to have communion brought to you where you are, please let one of the ushers know and um, Pastor Lane or I will bring it down to you. All are welcome.
Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, dear people of God, receive the blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is number 338, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Go in peace, Christ is with you.